Tool sent back to Witherell. Witherell to number 20. It's number two, Hagen. It's tough defense from Fisher. Toulson, back inside, easy pass. Shot no good. And we have a whistle from the far side. Looks to be a defensive foul in the backcourt. So Marcus Howard will go and shoot the one and one. Yes, that does put Hawks at 17 fouls, meaning that the Pumas now have the option for one and one penalties, so that means if they make the first one, then he gets the chance to shoot the second one. As Luke Swig checks back in for Jake Mortensen. And you can hear the Highland student section. They're chanting ball hog at somebody that's shooting free throws. Doesn't really make much sense. Marcus Howard makes his first, so he'll get at least the opportunity to shoot a second one. Marcus Howard, 91% this year at, from the line. It's truly outstanding stats. His second, nothing but nets. 10 point game, minute 37 left to go in the first half. Sanchez bringing the ball up, gets a pick. As we have almost a loose ball, with throw on it now for the Hawks. Always a three-point threat whenever he has the ball. You expect him to shoot. Brown has it. Fisher tried to get him from behind. It's going to be a loose ball. Looks like Witherell comes up with it and makes a layup. Very unlucky Perry series of events. struggling to stop him on, on defense tonight. The story of this Hawks team this season so far has normally been Toulson, but tonight it's all Witherell. Nailing threes and layups. It's Kobe on the drive, gets the and one. And the Pumas can get back into this game with some momentum here. Kobe De La Fiaga, 100% so far this season from the line, six for six. Let's see if he can keep that streak going. Can he make it seven for seven? No, he cannot, back rim no good. And one of the fundamental uh, theories, or not theories, ideas in basketball is you gotta make your free throws. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. It's gonna be the same shot every time you do it. It's kinda one of those things that people practice for hours and hours, and you just gotta be able to do it to be a successful basketball player. 30 seconds left to go in the first half. Toulson passes to Hagen. Hagen finds Sanchez. Sanchez on the wing. Gives back to Hagen, gives to Witherell. Smart play by the Hawks right now, slowing this game down, denying the Pumas any chance of making more points during this first half. Hagen. They're just gonna pass the ball around. With throw, no good. Puma once again will get a chance to shoot the last shot of the game. Five seconds left. Levaga, pass tipped, and it's gonna go out of bounds just before the clock strikes, double zero. 1.8 seconds left in this half. It'd be really useful for the Pumas to knock down this three points right now. Not only for the points, as the referees look like they're going to talk this one over to clarify whose ball it is. Perry ball. So it'll be Bryce Fisher to inbound, 1.8. And if they make this buzzer beater, it's not only a point thing, it's a momentum thing. As Sawig puts up a prayer, hits the glass, no good. So first half concluding, 28 Pumas, 38 Hawks, 10 point lead for the visiting team. Story of the game for me, and I think you'll agree, has been Austin Witherell. It's been almost every time he shoots, it seems like it goes in. I, uh, he's been truly on fire. I think I've seen him miss one shot so far. Just from the free throw line, phenomenal. He can shoot it from several feet back, no problem. You give him a little bit of hole, he's going to drive down to the basket and make a quick layup. Really, Austin Witherell is just the story of this game so far. But it's interesting because he played that entire half, did not sub out one time. So we're going to see if his stamina is going to be able to hold up through the rest of this game. 
or if he's going to tire out and not have the same kind of production in the second half that he had here so far. So we'll bring you the cheerleaders' performance, and we'll come back for the second half of basketball here from Perry. 38-28, Highland over Perry. It's 
probably the best turnout we've ever had this season, I should say. Are you serious? There's only seven people watching. Six. Yeah. Five. I don't think I don't think we have any points in the paint. Maybe except like a basket. Yeah. It's been all perimeter shooting. Marcus has one two. But it was all it was like on the line so it yeah. wasn't even And we are back. Second half about second half about to take off here in Gilbert. And interesting first half. We were looking at the first half stats. It's been all about Witherell and Toulson. Witherell's nailed five threes so far this game and two twos for a total of 19. Witherell or Toulson only one three but six two pointers for a total of 15. Toulson's normally a great three point shooter, but tonight. He's driving in, taking advantage of the fact that Perry's not really playing a hard physical defense on him. And the points for the two Howards, uh, Jordan, eight points uh, thus far, six coming off of free throws. 
Marcus scoring all in the first quarter, 14 points. And Perry has a total of 28 points right now. So if my math is correct, that is six points coming off people other than the Howards. Yeah, it's, I talked to Jordan Howard again and he said what they need to do offensively, use speed to their advantage and share the ball. I know going into that halftime, they just got an earful from Coach Babinski because they haven't done either of those things. The majority of this game has been half court offense, slowing it down, passing the ball around. That's not where the Pumas succeed against this Highland team. Also, share the ball, like we said, six points coming from the non-Howard brothers. It's a tough game right now for them. As we get going in the second half, it's Fisher for the Pumas as they have their starting five out there. It's Mortensen in the post. Mortensen, the pass, juggle, layup off the glass and good. Nice job by Jeffrey Verrett and Vogue to recover from that bobbled pass and still make that two. Sanchez, Howard guarding, now passes to number 13. White, White to Withrow, Withrow right from half. And it seems it, start off, it starts off exactly how the first half went. Withrow from three point, knocking it down, 11 point game. Jeffrey Vredevog on that three point shot, got in his face, can't swing on him though because that's a foul. Fisher, wide open three, can't convert. Ball tipped. With the roll there on the recovery. Lucky moment for the Highland Hawks as it's Sanchez in the corner. Marcus Howard guarding, driving them down the paint. And we're going to have a push on Marcus Howard. And to me, that looked like a soft foul. Yeah. This game so far in this half, of course, we're only a minute in. Very similar to our first half. Slow game. With the roll dropping threes. Pumas need to make a change from what their first half was like. Oh my goodness, Chip White, number 13, throwing it off the back of Bryce Fisher, almost converting on the layup, and now it's Marcus Howard all alone, easy finger roll, and the Pumas get it on the fast break. As we have a whistle from the far side referee. Far side referee conversing with number 33, Jeffrey Vredevoke, he's gonna limp off the court. Not, not the best of moments for Perry when your big man walks off limping. That's tough. They need him to get up in Witherell and Toulson's face and get some strong defense at the three-point line. But now he's out, and they're going to leave it to bench player Brandon Bedessi. As it's Toulson. The shot contested. No good. Loose ball still. Mortensen. Controls, outlet pass to Jordan Howard. Jordan Howard, the layup, gets the foul, the bounce, oh. and drops. Slow bobble into the, into the basket. Anticipate a moment by the student section here. You can almost hear a pin drop when the ball was just sitting on the rim. Highland student section chanting to look at the scoreboard, only up by seven points. Very small game when it comes to basketball. Now I was gonna say as Howard converts the N1 that they were chanting right, uh, the student section for Perry chanting during Jordan Howard's free throw shot. As Christian Sanchez, nice spin move, pass inside to White. As ball taken Defense from Fisher. Defense better than expected. And we have a foul, a reach and foul on Witherell. Referee separating. Witherell and Fisher. With and it looks like the call is going to be on number 10, Bryce Fisher. Interesting call here. Wouldn't have expected that. Looks like a clean steal. But referee's referee talking it over. Call. And now the referee clearly getting some uh, jawing from the Perry fan side. And that's... As a referee myself, that's always one of the worst things when you just want you just want the crowd to go away as it's Toulson on the wing, up and good, and Highland take advantage on the interesting call. Brandon Badesi can't chase Toulson. If you chase him to the basket, he's gonna make that layup every single time. You gotta get in between him and the basket. Toulson just got around Brandon, 
and drove in, took advantage of that. Marcus Howard driving into the lane, gets foul ball, almost fell in for the end one. So Howard will get two free throws. Second team foul. He sinks both knees. It'll be a six point game. First one short, no good. Uncharacteristic of Marcus. Marcus coming into the game, a 91% free throw shooter. So it's rare to see a miss from the line from Marcus Howard. His second is good. And it's not that he's a 91% shooter with not very many shots. He's a 91% shooter with 93 free throws this season. So that is an outstanding statistic right there. Till this game, he had only missed eight of those 93 shots. Ball passed and almost stolen by Brandon Badis. As the referee is saying that he stepped out of bounds. So Highland will retain possession. Ooh. Sanchez almost losing control there. Now with the roll, looking for a pass. Finds number 33, Brown. Brown now looking for a pass. With the roll for three all game long as Highland is going to have three free throws. A late foul called in on Witherell. Very questionable because it was called after the shot was actually made. Withrow, I think, deserves a little bit of an Oscar for that fall there. But he got the, he got the foul, so he's going to take three shots. This is where Highland can really take control of the game. Third team foul on Perry. And the free throw, as we said, they win games. Witherell, if he sinks all these three, as I said it, commentator cursed him into missing the first one. But if he sinks the next two, it's going to be a nine-point game. Still a very manageable deficit for the Pumas. They just got to get some production. It's almost though the entire game, whenever Perry has uh, mounted some momentum, Highland has come back on the next two possessions and almost taken it away for them. Since Marcus Howard... Crosses over, Christian Sanchez layup no good, rebound by Toulson. Toulson pushing the break for Highland. Toulson the floater, gets the bounce. Marcus Howard needs to understand he's not the only player on this team. He's a younger and experienced player, he sees a deficit. Puma's having a great season, he wants to win this game so he's trying to take it upon himself to get production. Needs to realize he's not the only one that can shoot the ball. Badis with the shot, Nelson Bonnet. Good recovery there by Mortensen. Dish it out to Badis so we can get some production. Nine point game. Tolson finds Sanchez. Sanchez waiting for the play to develop. Crossover on Howard. Now to Brown. Brown the layup. Shorts. Loose ball. S no, no, taken away. Van Heron tried to save. Jake Brown with the steal. Now Christian Sanchez inside the dish. The layup. Good. Highland Hawks playing as a team. Perry Pumas playing as the Howard brothers. But as I say it, Marcus Howard dishing in that layup. Making it again, that nine point game. Toulson. Looking for something to happen. Passes inside as the foul is going to be called on number one, Jordan Howard. Two shots for number 33, Jake Brown. Jake Brown, 77% from the line this year, 10 for 13. As he sinks his first one, increasing the lead to 10. Jeffrey Veredevo coming back in for Brandon Badis. He needs to play much better this game. He's had no production at all. And not playing physical enough on defense against Witherell and Toulson. Highland getting the bounce on that one. Two for two from the line for Brown as it's Marcus Howard. Crossing over Sanchez. Balls way short though the shot. As now Highland look to be slowing this one down in the later stages of the third quarter. 
It's very smart play by Toulson to slow the game down. They're up, they got a sizable lead, and they play better when they're up and slow playing. So very smart move by them to slow the game down. Great pass from Toulson to Brown. Brown finishes the layup. 13 point lead for the Highland Hawks over the Perry Pumas. About three minutes left to go. Jordan Howard. The layup from Berter Verve, good. Vrede Vogue, Jeffrey Vrede Vogue saw that opportunity when the Highland defenders left a little gap there in the mid zone. Took a nice little short shot for two. Still an 11 point game, however. Pumas need some stops. I don't want to jinx it here, but it seems thus far Withrow has not been a factor as Toulson pulls from three. Nothing but net. Lead back up to 14. Marcus Howard dishes it to Van Heron. Van Heron back to Howard. Marcus Howard crossover, drives inside. Looks like we're going to have a foul here on Highland. Looks like a foul at number 22, Austin Witherell. Nope. Check that. Number 33 for Highland. Number 33, Jake Brown. So it's going to be Puma ball. Perry will inbound from the baseline. It's a quick inbound to Jordan Howard, and the foul will be called. So Jordan Howard will once again go back to the line, which has seen his most productive place thus far in this game. Yeah, 75% of his first quarter points came from the line. They seem to be fouling him a lot. So not a smart move for Highland. However, they keep doing it and they're still up by 14, so. First one falls. Jordan Howard bounces to take a second. It's good. Reliable from the line makes this a 12 point game. Pumas, man, gotta get some stops on defense. Their offensive production is starting to happen more, but their defensive stops are non existent at this point. Toulson and Witherell just knocking them down. Van Heron almost picked up the interception there on the errant pass. So close, but yet so far away on that one as he caught the ball and th the ball took him out of bounds as it's with the roll. Van Heron covering. Pass to Hagen. Hagen inside to Toulson. Toulson draped all over him as he finds Witherell and Witherell with the easy lay-in. Witherell standing next to the basket. His Puma defender came off to try and stop Toulson and left Witherell wide open. Shot from the corner from Jordan Howard, no good. Highland on the defensive rebound, now it's Toulson. Toulson with a nice over the head pass. Jake Brown to Withrow, Withrow a long three. And it falls yet again, 61-44. And if, if I'm Coach Babinski, I, I'd be taking a timeout here sooner or later. You can see the frustration on the Pumas' faces, not used to facing deficits this large, especially at this point in the game. Marcus Howard keeps shaking his head, missing shots. As Swig trying to smack the ball off a Highland defender. Luke clearly frustrated. Don't know how you could not be frustrated with this kind of game. The Pumas, the Pumas on the court almost look uh, defeated. They look they look defeated so far. They're not they're not playing with any energy. No fast paced basketball as we are used to seeing from this Pumas team. As Toulson off the glass and good. Tolson with the spin outside. He's been using that all night. He'll either spin out and shoot it or spin out and pass to Witherell, who's almost always open, it seems like. Swig not expecting the ball. Got caught up. Another turnover on the Pumas. Luke Seawig asking for a foul, not going to get it. And it seemed that the game plan for the Pumas, I would imagine, would be the guard to three-point shot from Tolson, but Tolson has been driving inside almost all game and the Pumas drawing another defender as Witherell takes a wide open three back rim no good volleyball 
tap and it will go out Puma basketball. But I was, as I was saying, Toulson was driving inside and the Pumas bring another defender and it's been the driving dish for the Highland Hawks. That has been the overlying theme as we have a half a minute left to play in the third quarter. 63-44 as Van Heron back to Jordan Howard. Howard pops a three in and out and nothing going for the Pumas right now. But Jordan Howard's not being very successful from that three-point line in this second half. They need to get some production out of him. I think he's missed three straight three-pointers this game. That alone would make this a much more manageable deficit. Howard. We have a foul called. And they're saying before the shot was taken, so it's not an end one. Pumas will inbound from the baseline. Highland, it's fifth team foul. Verder very good, that is a foul. Radevog gonna pull up the and one on that one, it looks like. When you're a big man like that, if you drive into the basket, two things are gonna happen. Either you're gonna get a shot at, an, at a layup, or you're gonna draw a foul. A lot of times guys like this don't understand that if you push in like that, you're gonna get some opportunity to score some points. Number one, Sanchez checking in for number two, Hagen. Austin Witherell still playing every minute of this game. They He's playing on fire and his stamina is holding up, so I don't blame his coach for keeping him in the game. They want to but he missed. So Puma's down by 17. Floater from Sanchez, no good. And that will end the third quarter. So at the end of three, it is a 63-46 lead for the Highland Hawks. Tough 17-point game here for the Pumas. They're going to need to come out in this fourth quarter and just completely shut down Toulson and Wither if they want to have any chance of overcoming that huge deficit. And for the Pumas, it has been all perimeter shots. Not much production, not many shots inside from the Pumas in this one as it's almost they're afraid of the big 6'5 Toulson. It's interesting as well because Pumas have big 6'6 six, six for Aiden Vogue and 6'5 Mortensen and on the Hawks side of the ball they really only have 6'5 Toulson who hasn't been playing much defense at the hoop so I'm not quite sure why they're not driving in on those smaller guards to make those inside layups. Puma starting four out there and it, by looking at the expression of their faces, they look defeated. Number three, Emmanuel to inbound, finds Sanchez. Pass inside the Toulson, good Nice play. steal by Bryce Fisher. Fisher with the fast hands, finds Marcus Howard. Howard pops for three. And that one finds the bottom of the net. As the Pumas start off the fourth quarter with a bang. You're gonna give Marcus Howard the opportunity to shoot an undefended three-point shot. He's gonna make that almost every single time. Very smart play by him. He looked, I saw him look down. He could have driven in, but there was no one around him and they're down by a lot. So we made the choice to take the three-point shot and it paid off. So we have a foul on Mortensen there as Mortensen obviously disagreeing with the call. So is Babinski. The Puma head coach, as you can see him taking a knee in front of the Perry bench. Almost in a emotion of, are you kidding me? As Toulson pops for three, that's short to ball no tipped. Good. Fisher. Fisher got the rebound. Pushing the break for Perry. To Jordan Howard for three, that is nowhere near what the Pumas need. Just uncharacteristic of Jordan Howard this evening. Missing shots left and right. When you have such a star player like Jordan Howard, if you get no product next to no production out of him in an evening, it's going to be a tough game. Both teams have their two star players, and it looks like so far Highlands just had a lot of production out of theirs. Perry hasn't had much out of ours. But it seems that Highland has been passing the ball around a lot more than Perry has. It seems that the two Howard brothers have almost controlled the ball. It's just been them passing back and forth to each other for the length of this for this game. It seems like Highland will move the ball around, set up, trying to 
switch some coverages to get Witherell Toulson onto a smaller man so they can make those three-point shots and in Toulson's case drive into the basket. As Toulson with behind the back to Emmanuel and that falls in. A 16-point game. As it's Jordan Howard on the pass from Marcus Howard, the layup no good. Still uncharacteristic from Jordan Howard. And it's been for Highland, their difference of their two big guys showing up. It's been, they've been passing the ball around which sets up their two big players. While Perry, the two big players are trying to create it by themselves which it's just not going to succeed over the time, of the period of a game. It, it worked in the first quarter but the last three quarters has been quite the opposite. Tools two players can only do so much, can't win a game with only a few players. As Bryce Fisher picks up the steal to Mortensen, Mortensen drives all the way, pass is tipped, ball knocked around. Luckily, pass was tipped right into Mortensen's hand so he could pass it out to Vereda Vogue. Toulson somehow left wide open, pass inside to Emmanuel, and Highland get two points right back. Highland taking advantage of Perry's confusion after that fast break. Perry nailed that layup and took their time getting back down. Highland quite the opposite, booked it back down to the court to make a nice easy layup, keeping it at a 16 point game. Not much time left for Perry to, to make this drive back to the lead. Down by 16 with about 5.45 left to play. Would be quite the deficit to overcome here. But Not we that it hasn't happened before, yeah. however. Two years ago in the playoffs, Perry had an excellent comeback lead against Basha High School to continue their playoff drive. I've seen this Puma offense come back against leads like this. They can do it again. They just got to get production out of more people than just the Howard brothers. Yeah, I was about to say that stranger things have happened in basketball. Especially at the high school level. Lower the level of a sport, the more volatile things can happen. And it's Marcus Howard with Sanchez covering on the full court pressure. Pass inside, thrown away. Van Heron there on the recovery shot from the wing. Two-pointer, no good. Rebounded by the Highland Hawks. Toulson taking his time, bringing the ball up to Witherell. Perry getting opportunities for shots, but they're not good opportunities. They're rush shots. Still under coverage, and that's why there is this 16-point deficit. Loose ball, Fisher takes it away, 2-1-1, on one, passes to Van Heron. Van Heron, easy layup, and that's what this Perry team needs to get the offense going. And Fisher on defense has been the main contributor. I want to say almost five steals in this second half alone for Fisher as he's been given the extra effort to try and turn things around for Perry. Fisher, 1.3 steals per game on the season. Going to inflate that stat a little bit this game. At Toulson, Highland taking their time. Smart by Highland, slow the game down. Take Toulson advantage of their lead. Drives. Toulson with his spin. And we're going to have another foul called on Perry. Bringing them into the seventh, it'll be two free throws for Tolson. You would think Perry's defenders have noticed by now that almost every time Tolson drives down, he's going to spin out and take that shot. They've let him do it all game, and they're going to continue to let him do it, apparently. Not going to be a good way to overcome this deficit. Tolson misses the first one. The second one up and coming, and it is no good. 0 for 2, that, that'll that work for Perry. A little bit of a lucky break for Perry, keeping this a 14-point game. Of course, 14 points, a lot, of, lot, a lot of points. Marcus Howard gets the and one. He's going to set up a nice three-point play for Marcus Howard. Make this an 11-point game if he can sink a three throw, which, as the Texas would tell us, he's going to. A little bit of knock on wood on that one. Definitely. His end one attempt, of course, finds the bottom of the net. As Perry now is shifting to the full court press. 
De La Vaga on him. Toulson loses it but recovers before anything catastrophic could happen. Perry starting to play tough defense. Toulson now double teamed. Now Van Heren switched off him. As we have a foul before the shot on De La Vaga. And Perry are in the penalty so it will be the one and one for Toulson. Kobe De La Viaga sending Toulson back to the line. Not a smart move at this point in the game. They're starting to come back on that lead. But given Toulson is a good free throw shooter, the opportunity to get more points for free, not a great way to, to bring this game back with only four minutes left. Toulson good on his first, increasing the lead to 12. Makes a second, 13 point lead. Plenty of time for the Pumas. They just need stops and they haven't been getting stops in this one. And it's Van Heron. Van Heron. Spin move to Fisher. Fisher drives. Dishes inside to Van Heron. Van Heron is good. Nice little fadeaway shot from Van Heron. Set up that two points. 11 point game. And that's what Perry need to do. Good ball movement by that one between Van Heron and Fisher. Set up a very easy layup. As it's with the roll to Sanchez. Ball stripped away by Van Heron. Van Heron pushing it. Spin move, and it gets slammed away. The Hard SWAT team. Hard by number 30, 13 for Highland. That's Chip White. Been actually quite good on defense so far in this game. The inbound pass is right to Toulson. And Perry, that's not what they need. And we have a timeout for Highland. 11 point game, three minutes, 16 seconds left. Definitely a doable lead with this amount of time. However, Perry needs speed up the game. Stop Toulson, stop Witherell. Get ball movement between all the players of the team. And it seemed for the first time since the first quarter that they have been able to push the pace a little bit and get points more you know not scoring once every three or four drives scoring once almost every driver once every two drives which is what they need to get back in this game Bryce Fisher and Kyle Van Heeren kind of taking it upon themselves to speed this game up they have both had a steal in the last few minutes of this game coming down making some smart layups that's what Perry needs if they want to win this game they cannot slow play like Highland can Like I said, Fisher was really given the extra effort to get the steals as he's been getting almost four or five of them in the second half. And now it's almost Fisher putting, trying to put the team on his back to get them back into this one. Like we said, definitely a doable deficit for Perry. Just got to get that defensive stops and the offensive participation from all, all players on the ball. Chip White finds Sanchez. Sanchez on the left wing, crosses over Marcus Howard. Cross side court, or pass I should say, to Toulson, Toulson. Not sure why Toulson didn't take that shot. He was undefended for several seconds. Not sure why 13 didn't take that shot either, but Witherell will and miss it. Kyle Van Heeren drives. On the break, De La Viaga lays in, and that one has to fall for Perry. And now the ball tipped by Howard, and that is a great extra effort to at least the defense, to get the defense back and possibly get a stop, which looked like a sure two points for Highland. Good effort by Marcus Howard to get this defense set up. Even though he couldn't steal the ball, he could stop that fast break layup. Two forty-two left to play as we are almost in crunch time in this one. With the row under the basket, fakes the shot. And Highland being very patient. Van Heron playing very tough defense. Playing good physical defense like we talked about. That's what they need. Sanchez hit the bottom of the backboard. Morrison. Morrison today. Laviaga. Laviaga. Pump fakes. Drives inside. Layup. This time falls. Surprised he didn't catch a foul. Or that Highland didn't catch a foul. And Kobe get the and one there. Definitely saw Highland arm come in and smack Kobe's butt. He got the two points. Nine point game. And here we go. Nine points. Single digit lead. About two minutes left to play in the game. Highland clearly slowing it down. Smart move by them. 
with the roll. And we are going to have a foul on Perry. Looks like that was on number 11, Marcus Howard. Referee has been pretty liberal tonight calling these fouls on very slight contact, but they're just doing their job enforcing the rules. And here we go, number 13, Chip White. Perry student section chanting for him to choke, miss this shot. He doesn't, however. Nails the first lead. one. 70 to 60. 60, I apologize for the confusion. Chip White's second free throw. That one is long and no good. Morrison with the rebound. Perry will take that. Bryce Fisher pushes the issue. Ankle breaker. De La Viaga for three. No good. Offensive rebound, though. Might be Perry's first offensive rebound of the game. And Bryce Fisher nails the three. And we have a timeout Coach by Perry. Coach Rubinsky instantly calling a timeout after that three point. Great job by the Pumas. That's what we need out of them. Speeding up the game, creating confusion for the Highland defense. They couldn't really get set up there. They left De La Viaga open, he missed the three. Got the offensive rebound, they left Fisher open, he got the three and made it. That sped up offense is what Perry excels at. If they can continue that, definitely a manageable seven point deficit. That's a few plays, few stops, where we have ourselves a game. Going to be quite the comeback if Perry can pull it off. At one point, suffering from a 17-point deficit. And in the high school basketball here in Arizona, there is no shot clock. So Perry, almost with 90 seconds remaining, might have to start fouling Highland here in order to save time. Perry in the past has taken advantage of that rule, the no shot clock rule, just passing the ball, moving the ball around in situations like Highland is currently in when they're up by some points with a little bit of time left, denying the loser as many points as possible. That's the name of the game here in these in these low time situations. And almost finally, the volume comes back into the gym here. Wide open layup, no good, loose ball. We're gonna have a jump ball. Possession arrow is pointing towards Perry's way. So Perry come up lucky and the defense comes up big. Perry's ball, really seven point game. An inexcusable to miss there by number 13. This kind of situation, that kind of layup is a a crucial amount of points that you need to put your team, seal that win. Marcus Howard, Highland playing full court press. Howard driving in the it's layup. Good. It's good. That's the Howard Tower we've been talking about. That's what we wanted to see. Drive to the basket, be aggressive, be offensive. Just half a minute gone by and we got ourselves a five point game here at Gilbert. The comeback is not complete, but it is sure on its way. Yes, I can smell it in the air. Comeback is on its way. Perry's a team full of heart. Can't go 21-1 and one without having great team chemistry and really trusting in your teammates, and that's what they've done here. Howard brothers weren't performing very well. Bryce Fisher and Kyle Van Heron took it upon themselves and said, no, I'm not going to take this loss sit sitting down. We're going to bring the game back. They sped it up and got this lead to a manageable five points. Van Heron and De La Viaga are staying on the floor for Perry and I don't see a reason to take them off. They're playing very well. As a stadium is very loud here at Perry High School. Witherell with an open three. Don't know why he didn't take that. I would assume it's because they're trying to slow down. Perry the Two man defense. An unlucky call on the foul on Toulson. And almost the Perry crowd team. just erupting at that referee after that call. Toulson going to take his first free throw. 
Toulson and Witherow are the two best free throw shooters on this Highland team. So Perry on, the, on those inbound passes need to do a better job. Let anybody but those two get the ball. Toulson, however, did miss two free throws earlier in this quarter. He missed two and then he came back on his next set and made both to redeem himself. Jordan Howard is going to come into the game. Let's see if he can get some better production than he had earlier in this game because so far he has been cold from the three-point line. A great, a great performance by Bryce Fisher as the first one falls for Toulson, increasing the lead to six. Six points, just a two-score two lead if Perry plays it right. Second one, no good. De La Viaga, we have a foul called. And Highland Hawks are at seven fouls, meaning De La Viaga will go to the line for a one and one That was their eighth foul. Lucky break there for the Pumas. De La Viaga can knock both these down. We're at a very, very manageable four-point deficit with one minute, eight seconds left to go in this game. De La Viaga, clutch free throws here, his first. No good. Toulson with a defensive rebound as he gets past one. They need a foul. Toulson goes all the way and he does get the foul. Surprised that that was a foul on Toulson and not a travel. It looked like he stopped dribbling when he got to the three point line and decided just to straight up run to the basket. But he didn't draw the travel and now he's going to shoot. Really too bad that De La Viaga missed that first free throw. Instead of a six point game, we're now looking at a possible eight point game here. His first, no good. The ball went halfway down, but the home field advantage serves Perry Wright. Yes, very much. This stadium's very loud right now. Both student sections very excited. Knocks down the second one, seven point lead. Quick inbound pass to Marcus Howard. Howard taking him himself. Howard behind the back move. Howard now driving. Marcus Howard goes all the way. Oh, and that's a layup that has to be made. No Not sure why called. Marcus Howard didn't dish it out. Several undefended Perry players on the three-point line. Really, you need those big points in this kind of a situation instead of making a slop and free throw and missing it. Perry wasting time there, not fouling immediately. Highland playing smart, having Toulson with the ball. He's their best free throw shooter. They're going to try and put him at the line every time, and he's going to sink them the majority of the time, just like he did there. Got quite the bounce, though, however. Eight-point lead for the Highland Hawks. The second... It's a nine-point game. That means even if the Pumas take three unreturned three-point shots in the next 40 seconds, they still have to play the overtime. Mortensen, no, no good. good. Offensive rebound. Marcus Howard tries to get the foul called from the three-point shot. Doesn't. And Highland will go back to the line to shoot free throws. Thirty-three point nine seconds left in this game. Currently a nine-point game. Number thirteen is going to take two shots. That's really tough. Perry missed two three-point shots. That could have put them back at a manageable score. It's going to be a close one if they can pull this off. First free throw is good from number thirteen, Chip White. Ten points. A lot of points to overcome in just half a minute, especially with Highland shooting as well as they're doing from the line tonight. Now the referee talking with the scores table again. Not sure about what, don't see any change on the scoreboard. Chip White's gonna take his second from the line. His second. Finds the bottom of the net, an 11 point lead. Very clutch free throws there from Chip White. This makes this a four score game with 33 seconds left. 
Very, very tough lead for the Pumas to overcover. And here we go, Marcus Howard. Double team. They know he's going to shoot. He does shoot. Oh, he made wow. It. In double coverage, shoots between two defenders and sinks the three. You can't teach that, ladies and gentlemen. Even with the three-point shot, though, it's an eight-point lead with 23.2 seconds remaining in the game. Now, here we go, another inbound pass. You got to cover Toulson. You got to cover Witherow. And if you can, foul anybody except Toulson Witherow. Their best shooters. If you send them to the line, they're likely going to knock both down. It's hard to overcome that with this little time left. Eight-point game here in Gilbert. Perry pulling into within five points. Then Highland right back increases the lead to 11. And now with the three-point shot made by Marcus Howard, we stand at an eight-point lead with 23 seconds. Common sense would tell us that this game is over, but you never know in basketball. With the roll on to the that ball, very they got a unlucky foul. set of free throws by De La Viaga. Had he sunk both of those, Perry would have been looking at a four-point game with momentum. Instead, they're now looking at an eight-point game, 19 seconds left. Got to be very, very difficult, especially with these free throws about to be knocked down. With the rolls first, finds the back of the net. A 10-point lead with 19 seconds would be almost insurmountable as Withrow knocks out Highland a second. Highland student section shouting, na na na, goodbye. Seems to be that way for the Pumas. Pumas going to suffer their second regular season loss here. Howard throws up a <laughs> and of course it finds the bottom of the net. Clock still rolling. No foul called yet. Howard trying to foul. Refs decided this is the point in the game when they're not going to call fouls. And that's how this one is going to end, 78-71. Number hot. seven, Highland knocking off number eight, Perry. On paper, it seemed like Perry had a better chance of winning this game. They had a deeper roster. They had more production out of more players on their team, but Tolson just absolutely fired a game. Austin Witherell just absolutely on fire from the three-point line, knocking them down nonstop. Going to create this win for the Hawks. It just came down to the Howard brothers trying to take over the game and them being unable to do so while Highland moving the ball around efficiently and effectively. Perry suffers its second regular season loss, putting them at 21-2. Highland moves up to 18-6. and six. That's a 78-71 game here at Perry High School. I'm Caleb Braggett signing off.